Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the digitally digested segment, for the HP Elite Dragonfly 2-in-1. Now, this Ultrabook is clearly targeted at enterprise users because of its security features and because it's incredibly expensive, but that doesn't mean that it won't or it shouldn't appeal to consumers alike, and that's because it's very light, it's very powerful, and it really has overall great build quality, and I think HP just did a fantastic job on pulling it together. Now, HP did furnish me with this for review, of course, full disclosure, if you missed my initial impressions, unboxing, uh, etc. And this is a very good machine. It doesn't sport Intel's 10th gen processors, but will soon. The only reason that this is rocking an 8th gen i5 is that this is all about security, as I mentioned, and we've got uh, v Pro certification with the 8th generation. So you can spec this out however you like. In this case, uh, an i5, uh, again, 8th gen uh, U-series processor complemented by 16 gigs of RAM, half terabyte NVMe drive, and then we've got a 1000 nit uh, bright full HD display with SureView, which is all about privacy. A simple flip or switch or press of a button enables that. Can't really see it here, but as soon as I take you on any sort of uh, side angle, you can instantly see the difference. I'll go ahead, uh, make sure brightness is all the way up, which it is, and I will hit that sure view button one more time. And so now you see it, now you really don't. I mean, you can see something, but uh, not too well. So very easy to turn that sure view on and off. But again, this is all about security. So whether it's the actual hardware security of having vPro certified processors, or of course, as I just showed you, the physical security of not having prying eyes looking at data. So whether you're in, well, any field with sensitive information, this is going to be, I think, a very good option to consider. Overall build quality is very good. Uh, when I compare this to my own personal daily driver, uh, the HP uh, X360 13T, the Spectre, uh, which I have right here. I'm going to bring it over for a second. You know, you might be wondering why not just go with a Spectre, and I'll address that through the course of this video. It's less expensive, uh, newer processor. You can get an OLED display, which I'm sure eventually will be available, but I'm not positive. It's not like HP told me that, uh, and in some ways, this is more feature rich, but this isn't really targeted at business users. Again, that doesn't mean a business user wouldn't want uh, the two-in-one that I use as my daily driver, but uh, oleophobic finish, which means fingerprints are nil. The build is uh, magnesium, but it's entirely, to my knowledge, built out of recycled parts. Uh, so that's also a nice thing to know, but you are paying a significant premium for all of the, these things coming together. Uh, keyboard has solid backlighting and the key travel is good. Uh, no different than uh, my Spectre X360 13T. Uh, 2.2 pounds, it makes it the lightest 13.3 inch two-in-one on the market, I'm pretty sure, uh, beating out the LG Gram. I'm not sure if their refresh is getting even lighter, certainly beating out Dell, everybody. Uh, so that's impressive. Remember the Spectre that I just brought in a frame that's sitting over here uh, is a little under three pounds. So considering that they have a similar form factor, you know that this is the thinner and lighter machine. And again, I do expect to see a 10th gen CPU as soon as it has vPro certification, which may have happened already for all that I know. You can get this with LTE, uh, which is another thing. So if you do want to drop a SIM card in here uh, for complete mobile capability, you can. And then ports. I mean, this is where the Dragonfly sets itself apart besides build quality. And I do feel the build quality is a little bit more substantial than what you get with the Spectre. Less flex in the display from the back and just the overall feel, fit and finish is a little bit nicer. I, I would be lying if I said otherwise. Does that mean it justifies the higher price point? No, that's a matter of personal preference. HDMI out, headphone jack, uh, Thunderbolt uh, 3, which is nice to have, Type-C, of course, uh, ports there. And then on the other side, we have an SD card slot. That's also where your SIM card slot would be, uh, security and power button, and then a Type-A uh, USB port. 
and that pretty much rounds things out. Nothing else on this machine. Uh, the webcam, which is front and center, does have a privacy uh, shroud or blocker right there. It kind of looks like a screen. And with the slide of a switch right there, you open it up. Now it is back to being able to view you. Uh, the webcam is okay. Uh, it's not much like the Spectre over here on the right, not going to knock your socks off. But in this day and age, unfortunately, no laptops out there, at least I've yet to encounter one, that really has a high quality webcam. And considering the pandemic, well, this wasn't made, obviously, during the pandemic, but hopefully going forward, manufacturers are going to realize there is a strong value in giving us a quality webcam. These one megapixel, and I'm not saying this is a one megapixel, but the standard of the one megapixel webcam, I hope, is put down because it's just, you know, it's, it's better than nothing. But for me, it's like having nothing. So amazing display, even though it's not UHD, and that is my personal preference, but that also takes a big hit on battery life. And that's another thing where the HP Elite uh, does a very good job. This uh, specific build with the SureView is going to give you, uh, I would say 10 to 11, maybe even 12 hours of battery life. Uh, and I think that's very good. I mean, if I go ahead and just pull up a video, a quick test uh, for all of you that are curious, let's jump over, I'll go to my YouTube channel and well, some other things populating here. I didn't know someone's got a podcast with my name. That's interesting, isn't it? But just to take a look at some content, I want you to see what the screen looks like. Uh, Touchscreen performance, by the way, it's loading right now on Edge, is very good. Not too much wobble on the hinge, which is also critical to me. That's something that HP seems to have gotten right across the board. Now, Edge this is... Digital Digest, and today I want to, you know, somewhat of a... Trying to open it up for all of you. Clearly not the uh, HP product, but... Uh, it'll still serve the purpose. This is not a competing product, thankfully. I'm not trying to pit uh, two companies against one another. I do think Lenovo and HP pretty much are hitting it out of the park these it's days. It's really a matter of what you're looking for. Um, I personally, at the time of purchasing my HP, was looking for something a little bit more lightweight, but I was very much intrigued by this because, again, for that pound and a half difference, this thing is a powerhouse compared to an Ultrabook, but yet it still looked so part of the reason I'm sharing this right now is because forget that the screen quality is very good and hopefully it reproduces here. I know you see me in the background. It is a high gloss uh, screen, so glare is abundant. Something that isn't necessarily there for business machines, but in this case, it probably, I think, has to do with the SureView display. Um, but the audio performance on this machine is great. Is it perfect? No, but for an Ultrabook, it's one of the better ones out there. I would say right in line or right below uh, the Lenovo C940, which again is a consumer, not a business oriented. It's not an enterprise machine, but considering what the speakers are like on the Spectre X360 13T, something noteworthy. Again, not something that I think justifies the price jump. Uh, the price jump is about security. So when anybody looks at this machine, and I'm sure some of you will in the comments start saying, Ed, this is not worth the price of entry. You've got to remember, they're not after traditional users that are walking into Best Buy or shopping on Newegg or B&H. Uh, but in the, in the same vein, if the fact that this is lightweight, powerful, and does have features that are absent from something like the Spectre line, then by all means, HP is going to welcome consumers to pick this up. After all, why make this machine so aesthetically pleasing if you're not trying to make everyone happy? Because God knows the Lenovo options, when we get into the ThinkPad comparisons, or, I mean, Dell does a better job, they're ugly as sin. I mean, I like Lenovo, but their business machines are clearly not made to be pretty. And I'm not calling this pretty, but it certainly is a sharp piece of hardware. So that's something to be aware of, and uh, it's fairly standard. It's not a new thing when we're talking about enterprise uh, hardware as opposed to consumer-oriented products. Uh, one is made to be visually appealing because that often will sell it, whereas the enterprise is going to be sold based off of its security uh, capability and overall hardware that will actually make the grade for protecting content, information, intellectual property. That's the focus of a machine like this. So. Uh, before everyone starts ragging on the price, and I'm not saying this is what I would purchase, please remember that, and this is not in defense of HP, it's just common sense, that this is not geared towards you. Uh, 
Um, if you don't have uh, information on your machine that's worth protecting, that's worth more than the price difference between this and a machine that isn't enterprise grade, well then you've answered the question as to why this is more expensive than something like the Spectre. So uh, while I prefer the Spectre, if they were to launch a commercial version of this that was not directed at enterprise, that didn't have to have vPro, that didn't have to have, well, optionally SureView I think is a good thing to have integrated everywhere, but I don't believe that's optioned out for HP on anything other than this machine, uh, then I would definitely consider this uh, because it doesn't get that hot. That's another thing you should know. Uh, so no matter what you're doing with this, it stays relatively cool. Uh, the two-in-one capability is certainly nice. So whether you want to go for uh, the full-on tablet mode or you're interested in the content consumption or tent mode, it's going to work well. And that's something you know I expect. The experience is very similar to the Spectre in that regard, but it's lighter. So that does make it more versatile, better speakers, ironically, slightly better for content consumption, even though it doesn't have that OLED display. Uh, the 1000 nit brightness, really when you're outside, is just fantastic. Uh, do you need that inside? Not so much, but all the talk these days about HDR capability is all centered around brightness. And we all know you need a, a thousand nits to even really enter that conversation. All these monitors out there that are five and 600, they're nice, there's nothing wrong with them, but they certainly are not uh, of the category, the class uh, that you'd be looking for if your goal was to achieve uh, industry standard brightness. And this machine does that and not at a big hit to the battery life. Granted, again, it's 1080p and that is important to note uh, but for most users out there, 1080p is still the sweet spot. That's what they're looking for. It's the best balance of usability, functionality, and of course, overall battery life performance. And I think that will change with time. Uh, I I'm really looking forward to the future of this machine. Some things that I wish it had, and I, I didn't comment on the trackpad. The trackpad uh, does a perfectly good job. I think for the size of the machine, the trackpad size is great. Uh, it could have been smaller. I mean, when I break open, uh, the X360 13T next to it, you know, the trackpad, very similar. And there you have it literally side by side. But what I can tell you is, again, on the build quality note, the build quality tip, uh, this machine is just, it's built better. Uh, you know, with the X360 13T, anyone that followed my coverage knows that I had to go through multiple builds in order to get one that was to my standard and still not perfect. Audio is still tinny. Um, and there are a few other issues, but it's still well worth the money. This machine has zero uh, build issues out of the box. And quite frankly, it should not have any because it's very expensive at over 2000 US dollars. And maybe the price has dropped since HP sent it to me. It's been a while. Um, and again, once they refresh it and develop this even more, this may, I may be looking at my next HP machine. I mean, it's got everything other than the latest hardware. And that's where it stops me. So I've talked about the eighth gen processor, uh, the RAM certainly being enough, the NVMe having top of the line performance, uh, and all of the other features are fantastic. But the 620 integrated Intel uh, graphics, it's just, it's generations old already. And if you're familiar with it, you already know that this is not going to do any form of gaming really, other than, you know, really dated old titles, legacy type stuff. You want to play some Team Fortress, you could pull that off uh, but uh, and Counter-Strike, but you're not going to play anything else, even dumbing down the, the graphics, dumbing down everything for that matter. In addition to that, you have to also be aware of that for photo and video editing, this is not going to be ideal. In fact, not going to be ideal is complimentary. And that again reminds us that this is strictly targeted at enterprise users, people that aren't going to be doing those things literally because that's not what a company machine is meant for. Uh, if you're in any form of journalism, healthcare, I mean, those are just a few examples of where I see this machine thriving and just executives in general. Uh, you know, you want to give people a machine that again, secures your content, secures everything, but isn't designed for play really. So that's why for me, if this were to in any way end up being developed for the consumer market, I think it would be a home run for HP. I hope they do that. 
And, you know, I do have contact with them now, thankfully. So maybe it's something, I'm not saying that my PR contacts with HP are going to, you know, throw it up the chain and we're going to end up seeing a consumer version of this, uh, you know, that is going to satisfy the things I'm talking about, like throwing an OLED on here and giving us 10th gen with Iris graphics. But if they did that, this machine easily makes my Spectre look like it's irrelevant. That's, I mean, it's lighter. It would have all the same functionality, same battery life and better build quality, certainly better speakers, the ones that are firing here. You know, again, they're not perfect, but you heard just in that one audio sample how good they were. So let me go ahead and throw up some 4K HDR content. Now, remember, it's not going to be true HDR, uh, excuse me, 4K, because, well, how could it be? Uh, we're dealing with a 1080 display. Oops, did it mean to do that? Hold on one second. Little, I first met Gideon. You know, they're throwing ads at us, which is not surprising. Let me get this back here. And you'll see by default, 720p. I am going to put it to 2160 uh, because why not, even if it's going to be downsampled, downscaled, uh, have it going this way. Now, pandemic has not done wonders for my Wi-Fi, I will say that. Let's try to get my glare out of this as best we can. And angle this up for you a little bit. And we're getting some breakup on the Wi-Fi. So uh, I can assure you that's not a product of the quality of this machine. But we are getting a little bit. And just to make sure, because, I mean, I've used this enough to know that this is falling on my network. What we'll do is I will disconnect and reconnect just for the hell of it. Because I do know that this is going to be network related on my end. You know, I got to own it where it's mine. So let's go ahead and reconnect and let's try this all over again, shall we? And of course I could have edited that out, but why would I edit it out when I know it's not true to form on the product? And unfortunately you're seeing me because of that glare and brightness is all the way up. As you notice now, there are absolutely no Wi-Fi issues at all. If I jump through the video, so before anybody gets too crazy in the comments, hopefully they'll remember that this performs properly. That was just a Wi-Fi, some some interference. Now, let's go ahead and turn on that sure view. I'm going to go full screen. And again, you'll get an idea of how much that changes things. Exactly. So it's not that it makes it so you can't see anything, but you certainly aren't going to get what you would from a direct head-on view. And that's the whole premise of the SureView security. Now you can actually see what's going on screen from the left side. So. Of course, SureView is not a new concept. It's, it's been around, but it was usually an overlay that you had to put on. It wasn't built in. And so I think it's good that HP has thrown it in here. It's just another feature that I think, again, journalists, medical profession, it, it's a given. I think lawyers will appreciate something like this. I mean, anyone with sensitive data that really is only for their eyes. And then of course, hardware to make sure it's only for their business. Um, it's a win-win. So you know whether you need these features, you know whether you want to drop the money on them. It's all a matter of whether or not you need a two-in-one form factor and something that actually is, again, aesthetically pleasing because I do think they've done, in my opinion, a much nicer job than the competition. And that being, again, Lenovo or Dell in this segment. Um, I could talk about other manufacturers, but those are the big players uh, vying, obviously, for enterprise-related uh, business. So what else is missing? Well, on my Spectre, uh, 
you know, we have a mute button, obviously, that's dedicated that lights up. I like that. But why the camera, uh, the kill switch button is omitted uh, on the side of the Spectre. We do have a kill switch for the camera that you can just switch on. I don't know why they didn't do that here. Uh, again, it's all about security. We do have the blinder, the screen, uh, but I think that it would be wise to throw that kill switch on here. There's no reason to really not have the kill switch, right? I mean, it would fundamentally change things. And just so you realize how bright this display is, that's all the way down. And let's bring it all the way back up. And this really is twice as bright as anything else that I've tested. I mean, the OLED here is about 400 nits, maybe a little bit more. Uh, the Lenovo products are also in that same range, four to 500 nits. So this is very impressive and uh, you're going to want to use it all the way up for the most part. I mean, in my, for my use, I've kept it all the way up because it doesn't burn my retinas. Now, there are some people that look at a thousand nit screen and well, it's not for them and I get it, but uh, I really do like this system. And, and just so you can see it side by side, again, with what I believe is going to be the most common comparison for logical reasons, uh, the same manufacturer, very similar uh, build quality, very similar size is, of course, this machine right here, the Spectre. And, you know, it can't recognize me. It will in a second, unless I have the uh, the kill switch. No, I do not have the kill switch. Let me enter my pin off screen. You know, since this video has been so much about security and, you know, just quickly closing out some things few things here and there. Excuse that the desktop is a little bit of a mess. And I do use this for 4K editing, uh, the Spectre. And, you know, I really love this machine. If you followed my coverage, you already know that. Uh, but looking at them side by side, you can see they have completely different identities. I mean, in every way, shape, and form. I mean, it's just, they're, they're night and day in terms of design cues. Um, and I think that's clearly because, again, you've got a consumer versus a business product and it shows. Uh, so I really like the Dragonfly uh, and I would, as I've said through the course of the review, absolutely entertain picking one of these up if it checks the additional boxes. And I mean, right now you can even see OLED side by side does not have uh, the brightness that this machine has. I mean, it should be glaringly obvious, even though I don't have, um, you know, edge open right now. And you're just looking at my desktop. It, you know, the OLED wins me over every time. But for those of you who aren't OLED fans, you know, you already know that this is the, the killer display. And I do actually like uh, this keyboard. It's, it's not as, how do I put it? Um, they're not trying as hard with this. And I like subdued, uh, subdued, listen to me, I'm not running for president yet. I like subdued uh, and understated rather than the ostentatious. And that's part of the reason I went with the silver color on the X360 uh, 13T is that I felt it just, I'm not looking for flashy. Of course, the 13T is a little bit flashy by nature. The Dragonfly is the opposite. And that I, I really do prefer. But when it comes to the hardware, you know, Sky's the kind of the limit over here, but on the security side, it's not the limit. And here it is, the sky's the limit. So that's really what it boils down to. Um, and, you know, battery life, obviously with the uh, UHD uh, OLED that you have here, you're not going to get even close to what you will out of this. But if I were to have uh, the you know, full HD version of the Spectre, then yes, battery life would be comparable. Uh, this machine does not get as hot as the Spectre. The Spectre will cook you a little bit unless you put it on the cool mode. Uh, it just, the way it dissipates heat here and here, it's just very hot. Now, in terms of upgradability, there's not a lot to be said for either of these machines. So bear that in mind, uh, but their cooling solution is very similar. Uh, so. I think it's just a matter of the internal design. I didn't rip this apart. I don't do that. Maybe one day I'll start ripping them apart like some other YouTubers. I always appreciate when YouTubers do that, but not everybody's looking to actually 
rip them apart. Uh, I focus more on what is upgradable. I believe that the RAM is soldered here, just as it is here. Uh, NVMe can be upgraded. So if you do want a larger drive, like I have the two terabyte inside of my Spectre, you can go that route. Uh, the moral of the story is both of these are fantastic machines, but as I've said over and over again, this two-in-one is all about business. This two-in-one is all about the rest of us. And I'm sure there are plenty of business users that will be happy with this. That to me is the most direct and appropriate uh, comparison that you could ever possibly make. Again, I would still pick this machine, but make some changes you know, and updates to the Dragonfly, and I'm probably going to feel that it's worth uh, the additional money. Those of you that always ask me, can it be opened with one hand? Well, I just answered it and almost damaged my X360 uh, with it. So um, if that's a make or break thing for you, which I will never understand, uh, then you know neither of these machines is going to be right for you uh, because eventually even this guy over here is going to lift up, not as quickly as the Dragonfly, but that's because the X360 13T is a heavier, thicker build. Uh, but overall, the Dragonfly, it's elite for a reason. I mean, it has things you will not find elsewhere. It has build quality that's exceptional. It is a good looking piece of hardware and I really have nothing negative to say about it other than of course, what you already know. It's expensive and for a reason, which is enterprise security. Uh, and I would like to see something beyond the 620 uh, graphics on board. But if that's my biggest complaint, then I think HP's kind of done a stellar job with this. So overall, really like it. Uh, happy HP sent it over because it was definitely a worthwhile unit to put through the paces. And uh, even though it's not for editing 4K video or uh, you know hardcore uh, Photoshop use or Revit or AutoCAD, it still can do just about everything that anyone would want to do other than those things. And considering its profile uh, and again, security features, I think it's ideal for a lot of people that I know who don't care about any of those programs uh, and capabilities that I just mentioned that you know the Spectre can take on uh, more capably because of its newer hardware and uh, Iris graphics. So there's definitely a big market for the Dragonfly and it's elite for a reason. And I look forward to reviewing the next generation uh, where it is sporting 10th gen uh, CPUs and hopefully uh, an OLED uh, or OLED as many of you like to refer to it, uh, display option. Um, hopefully something with UHD res and I'll expect less battery life, but for me as a content creator, uh, that definitely is a very appealing thing and I would like to have SureView on board. Haven't seen an OLED with SureView, but HP is leading the way. After all, they were the first ones to have a UHD OLED on a 13.3 inch uh, Ultrabook. So HP is doing big, big things, big moves, and I like what they're doing. That pretty much rounds things out. Welcome to the nearly 30 minute review of the uh, Dragonfly and it is elite. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. safe. <laughs> Later.